So this mass extinction event theory does explain why there would be so many all in this one area. If they all died very quickly and then they just got sunk into the muck and permafrost. So the, the Randall Carlson Graham Hancock theory, which is not the, really their theory, it's a, an actual scientific theory called the Younger Dryas Impact Theory that says that there's a certain period of time somewhere around between uh, 12,800 years ago and then Graham thinks it's probably happened multiple times since then, maybe not as big or maybe, but, but similar impacts where we pass through this comet cloud and the United States, uh, which was covered in, you know, half a mile of ice or as much as a mile high of ice, half the, half the country, all that was wiped out almost instantaneously. And that these things hit all over the world, probably reset civilization and probably caused the mass extinction of, in North America, it was like 65% of the megafauna died very quickly. Geologically speaking, real quick. Yeah. But to add a little interest to our site, you know, we do have excavators. We do dig around. We'd have mining gravel operations and stuff like that. But in the boneyard, we use the excavators primarily to keep the drains open. And we were digging one day, and we found burnt bedrock. And mm. you've probably seen a picture of that. Yeah. But the... Uh, but bedrock is actually burned. I mean, you can tell it's burned. It's you rub it. It's got charcoal. I mean, it's like, and it's, and the gravels right above it are burned. Now, to go along with that theory, we had sea levels that rose three to four hundred feet in a relatively short period of time, and Beringia, which was that land bridge that came across, suddenly it was no longer a land bridge. It was underwater. Worldwide, sea levels rose three to 400 feet around the globe. Yeah, quickly. Real quick. And might have been quicker than the megafauna could adopt to. Megafauna mm. had to have, they had to have the right ecosystem to live in. And it changed too quick and they couldn't adopt. That's my theory. Adapt. Adapt, yeah. Yeah. Um, so... That that's probably part of it too, right? Because some of the things probably survived. They think a lot of things died on the impacts or during the floods and during, if you found charcoal, I mean, they found um, this stuff that they call nuclear glass. It's called a trinitite, I believe is the way they, the, the way they pronounce it. But it's the same sort of uh, material they found during the Trinity explosion, which is like from the immense impact of the explosion, it turns sand and, and you know, particles into glass. And they found, they find that all around the world at that same, when they do core samples at that same time period. And so if there's impacts like that, there's most likely fires. Mm -hmm. And so there's probably, that's probably what you're looking at. Could, it could, it could, could be, yeah. or it could be some other sort of mass fire that hit that area. But it's under 60 feet of silt, mm. 10 to 15 feet of gravel. And where I'm, where this is located is the whitest pay streak in, in the interior. It's about a mile wide, this pay streak, where the gold is. <clears throat> the mountains used to be, you know, a couple few thousand feet taller than they are right now, where the pay was coming out of the host rock. And gold's got a specific gravity of 19, meaning it'll displace itself 19 times in water. <clears throat> so that's how sluice boxes work. Mm. You gold pans. You mix the dirt mm -hmm. with the water, the gold goes right to the bottom. Same way with the, the pay streak. The gold's moving down the creek, it goes deeper and deeper and deeper, the gravel goes over the top of it, pretty soon it hits bedrock, you can't go any deeper, and that's where it stays. And the gravel just keeps moving down. So there was a lot of water that went through this valley. This creek that, there now is not 15 feet wide, but the valley itself with the pay gravels is a mile wide. Wow. And there's gold throughout the whole thing. So at one point in time, there could have been a river that's a mile wide that was running through there. Could have been. I don't know. And these animals that they said that aren't supposed to be there, mm -hmm. what, what animals are those? Dire wolves being one of them. Dire wolves. You found dire wolves? Dire wolves. Do you have photos of this stuff? Uh, Is yeah. it all up on your Instagram? Yeah. Well. Jamie's I, looking. Yeah, there might be some on that uh, on my page. 
So when you found dire wolves, like in what condition? Just the bones? Yeah. Because you found some tissue too, which is cr kind of crazy. Yeah. Like a lot of these animals died and you found little pieces of soft tissue and tendons and ligaments, which those paleontologists were thrilled by. Like they couldn't believe it. Yeah. Yeah. They had uh, bones with marrow still in them. Wow. And uh, there's the carnivores had pretty strong jaws. They liked the marrow. That might explain why so many bones are broken, where they're broken. Mm -hmm. You know, they chewed into these animals. And uh, one of the other extinct, not just dead, but extinct animals we found up there is, uh, we've never found elk before. P well, we, we found some elk, but the experts say they didn't exist up there. And I know you're, you'd like to hunt elk and yeah. eat elk. but. They, but elk exist in Alaska. They exist down, I think they do. They do. The they south. do. Um, so that's a dire wolf skull? Yeah. Wow. They have uh, Roosevelt elk uh, in Alaska. They have them uh, on some of the islands on the coast. A, a Fognac. A Fognac has Roosevelt elk on it. Because uh, uh. it's, a, it's a very difficult hunt that people go on. And the problem is there's enormous brown bears on there. And uh, my friend Steve Rinella told a story on the podcast of how they shot an elk up there. And it's a, an incredibly difficult hike in and hike out. You're going through very st thick brush and terrain at a very steep angle. It's very hard to get through with anything. So they, they take this elk, they hang it in a tree, and uh, they, they start, they come back the next day to start to cut it up and to take it apart. But by the time they get back, a bear has already claimed it, and they don't know this yet. Uh oh! And they get rushed by this bear. He said it's the crazy. It, it ran straight through their camp, but it found so many people didn't know exactly what to do, and it ran through. One of their guys winds up on top of the bear's back somehow, so it literally plows through the camp, and he's riding this bear's back for like 15, 20 yards. And then falls off the bear's back, and the bear runs into the woods, and the bear's huffing at him. And then they get out their rifles. Like, they were eating lunch. Mm. They had no idea. So there are elk up there. Yeah, but they're not in the interior. Mm. And and we're— uh, Which is crazy, because they're on the island. Like, how are they on a fog knack if they're not in the interior? How'd they get on that island? How'd the little mini mammoths get down to the, one of the islands on the southeast? They say— Little these miniature mammoths lived there till three, four thousand years ago. Mm, that's interesting. That's yeah. island dwarfism, right? That happens with elephants too. When elephants live on an island, they get smaller. Yeah. Yeah.